Okay, it's 11 o'clock. Time to get started. So you're looking at my desktop screen. You should also have a panel visible. There's a little orange button called Hide, which allows you to show or hide your control panel so you can see more of my screen. Uh, I think you can move that to another monitor if you're working with two monitors. Uh, in addition, there is a Hands Up button, which will um, prompt me to uh, let you answer a, or ask a question. All you need to do is push that Hands Up button, and hopefully I'll notice, and then I can enable your audio. Um, alternatively, you could just type a message into the questions area, and I will see that, and I can answer either um, by voice or typing, probably by voice. Okay, once again, my name is David Mills. This is a Softree webinar on as-built uh, as designs using the location module. So let's get started. First of all, uh, this is mostly going to be our location design module, which allows you to design roads. Um, there's a, a separate piece that's been added in there for doing as-built surveys and uh, or remeasure surveys which allows you to look at the uh, road as it's being constructed and uh, compare it with the design if you wish before you can do any of that you need a surface so let's get into the terrain module the terrain module allows us to create surfaces so I'm just going to do a, a, a quick example here This as-built example, by the way, is available on the web. Uh, let me just go there and, and show you where it is. So in our, um, let's go back to the uh, home, softry.com. We have a tips and, t tips and technique, techniques section. Um, and you can always access that. Oops, that didn't help. I typed in two dots there. <clears throat> Google wants its FaceTime. Okay, so I'm just opening our, uh, our website. And in the main menu, there's a support section. Uh, and training examples is the second item on that menu. Once you're in the training examples section, you can choose from uh, various um, uh, various tasks, whether you want to look at forest engineering or civil engineering, I think the uh, as-built would be in both of those. And then uh, I like to just use the search in window to find things. So I type in as-built here, and that's not going to work. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's better. There we go, as-built quantities. So that, that gives you the option to download a um, PDF, which is a fairly in-depth discussion of fixed cross-sections and as-built quantities. Um, and there's a download for files that you can put on your computer and, and run through the example. OK, enough of that. Let's actually do some of it. So back to the terrain module. I'd like to uh, import for you some ASCII data. So here's a, a typical ASCII file. This is the as-built survey of the final grade. And I've created an ASCII import format. Um, I'm not going to cover the details of that for now. But uh, here is what the file looks like. I'm just going to wait for your screen to catch up there. There we go. So you can see that um, it's a point number, and then it happens, in this case, to be easting northing elevation. Um, sometimes total station files come in northing easting elevation, so you need to be careful which, which one you assign to x and which one you assign to y. y, of course, is northing. Great. So um, I'm going to read in those data points. Um, ASCII files, in, in general, do not contain a coordinate system. I'm going to assume it's metric and just read it into my D 
default. Okay, so there's there's your uh, data points, um, and I can create a surface from that. Now, in this case, the cross sections are right right on a line. So when I create a surface, um, and again, there's there's lots of examples on our web for how to create surfaces and all the options in here. Um, so I create a surface. It creates contours that look good. I take a look under, uh, let's just create a 3D view so that we can see what that looks like in 3D. And there it is. And it, you know, it looks great. This really does look like a road. Um, I believe that this surface will work fine for what I want to do. Doesn't always work out that way. Um, sometimes you end up with glitchy uh, triangles being created that are not suitable. Uh, a fairly typical example is when you get um, triangles that cross over the, the ditch line and join onto the road line, and so you end up with little dams forming across your ditch that don't represent reality. Um, so like any other terrain, you have to be a little bit careful. Sometimes you need to add break lines. Um, if the surveyor has been careful with tagging his point codes, then you can easily create break lines by connecting point codes of similar, um, for similar features, ditch lines, top of cut, things like that. OK, now that's all been done. I don't have to uh, actually create surfaces for all my as-built surveys. Now I'm going to switch over to the location module, and we're going to actually do some of the uh, comparisons and volume calculations. So to create a um, as-built survey, you need to create a new location design. And this is the uh, you know, same as if you were creating a road. You have to define what the original ground is. Now the original ground ha has been surveyed, and I've got a terrain representing it. So I'll choose that as my original ground when I create my new location design. In addition, a um, center line feature has been added to that feature, to that terrain. So I can just click on this and get my center line right away. Um, doesn't always happen. You can create your center line after the fact if you wish. This is the quick and easy way. OK, so now we're looking at original ground survey, center line feature, which has been imported, and um, a cross section, which is coming out of my template table. Well, this is, this is what you would do if you were designing a new road. This is not what I want to do. So first thing I'm going to do, and it doesn't really matter when you do this, is I'm going to turn off the, the uh, designed cross section. I do that by assigning the bridge or null template to uh, begin, from beginning to end. Assign the null template everywhere. OK, so now all we see is a cross section showing the ground. Now let's bring in some uh, some new layers that represent the uh, the surveyed as built surfaces or re measured surfaces. Okay, first of all, um, this is there's no obvious place to do this. You have to know to go into module setup. Um, once you're in module setup in the alignment tab, then you create reference features. Pardon me, reference terrains. So we click on the Terrains button here. And I'm going to just use reference terrain. Uh, they're different from subsurface terrains. So we'll start with ref reference terrain 1. Reference terrain 1 is going to be the next surface chronologically. So after original ground, we had the stripping surface. And that's what WG is. So I'll pick that as my reference surface. And I'll describe it. That's optional. This is the key point here. When you're creating an as-built survey, you need to assign the, the, the reference surface to a layer. Um, these layers are normally used in your templates. But we're actually kind of creating a template from surfaces instead of from designed slopes and um, you know horizontal offsets, things like that. 
Okay, so we've called this Surface 10. That's just arbitrary. Um, I picked it because I, I used it in the past, and I got some settings for that layer. So that's going to be my strip surface. I want to also create a reference surface for the layer above stripping, which is undercut. Again, I need to put it into my layers. Let's call it layer 11. And finally, I need a uh, final grade surface. There it is. That's the subgrade, actually. And we'll put that in uh, layer 12, which is the one following. So the order here is important. And um, like I said, it's chronological. First, first they stripped, then they undercut, then they built the subgrade. OK. That's all I need to do in the location module setup. Um, and now you can see, uh, not at this cross section, but as we move through the alignment, you can see my multiple layers. Now they're all black, um, and it's kind of hard to tell them apart. So I'm going to bring in a screen layout here. Now I could do this manually. I could go into Section, Options, Template, Options, and then set the line type and hatching and color and so on here. That's what that's for. However, screen layouts can save you some time because uh, all that information is saved in the screen layout. Now, I, I think I've got a screen layout set up here in my training area. There it is. So if you have downloaded and installed the um, training examples, you will have that template on your hard drive as well. OK, so there's the, uh, the screen. It looks a little different now. I've got my section window underneath it over a data window. And um, you can see that we're already we're, we're seeing the layers. We're getting some volumes. Uh, some of the numbers don't look very realistic. We're going to have to look into that. Um, great. This is just we're almost done here. This, this looks great. However, um, I do need to sort out why we're getting large volumes in some places. And also some, some more subtle things here. Like, for example, at this particular cross section, we're showing a positive volume for layer 10. Now, that, that layer hasn't been labeled yet, so maybe I want to do that. But layer, um, that's the stripping layer, surface 10. Why would the stripping layer show fill? That doesn't make sense. OK, well, first of all, let's label the layers. And I can do that in my um, template editor. So there's a. Um, feature here under materials you can go in and you can des describe each layer um, and yeah now um, it turns out that that information is stored with your template table so rather than going through and changing all those layer names I'm just going to open a template table here now if you if um, so if you do this regularly probably wise to set up a template table for doing as built or, or just um, doing everything. You might get away with only one template table. Let's see, I don't have it in this folder. I'm just going to go find it in my examples folder. Bear with me while I cruise through my uh, directory tree here. OK, so now this template table, it doesn't look any different. It's, it doesn't have any fancy templates in it, um, but it does have the materials labeled for layers 10, 11, and 12. And it calls them stripping, uh, subcut, and final, respectively. Great. OK, so done that. And now you can see that they are uh, the the titles in the data data window here make more sense. They've actually been labeled with their name. Great. Now let's look at those problems. Why are we getting fill in subcut or pardon me stripping um, in this cross section? So I'm just going to maximize the section window here and zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on. And looks okay.
Well, this is kind of weird. It goes off the end here, but that's um, apparently not causing problems. Might be the section afterwards or another section. This one doesn't seem to be uh, too much of a problem. But if we were to hatch um, subcut fill, we might find it. Let's go to the next cross section. Oh, this doesn't look good here. Oh, that's OK. Uh, I should have prepared this beforehand. Oh, that looks right. There we go. I think we've got some um, hatch area for undercut. No. Click here. It says hatch area for cut for subcut for uh, stripping. Sorry, there we go. Actually, you can turn on the uh, the hatching manually in the section options. Sorry to take so long to do this, but uh, so I can go into say hatch fill. There we go hoping to just do it with the right click because that's so much easier but when in doubt use the uh, the menu okay I don't see any hatching in this one now I'm just going to click through a few cross sections until I see some hatching and uh, <laughs> I'm not winning on this one oh well so um, Nonetheless, the data window is showing some, some fill in the uh, stripping, particularly a large amount right here. Uh, let's just jump to that cross section. That's probably where it falls off the end. Uh, no, it doesn't even exist in here. OK, that is stripping, isn't it? Yeah, so it must be the previous cross section. Yeah, there we go. So there's a, a large piece of fill for stripping. The other ones are small, and we're probably just not noticing them. There could be some other issues here. For example, um, should the undercut ever fill? No, and, and yet we're seeing it here. There's a little bit of fill in the undercut. Um, what's that caused by? Oh, that one's easy to see. There it is. Hatch undercut fill, and you can see there, there it's, it's filling. What's causing this? Well. Surveyors don't aren't perfect, and uh, in addition, the site under construction is is quite fluid, and and sometimes it's hard to tell where the undercut stops and where a little bit of material got piled by mistake. Um, he can't remember what the surface looked like before the undercut was taken out, and it's quite possible that some material was piled there by mistake. Um, okay, but. Still, we would like to clean that up. Um, there's other interesting problems here, too. Like, for example, let's look at undercut cut. Hatch cut area for undercut. OK. Um, it goes right up to the stripping surface. I think I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Um, we'll leave that as is. OK, so we got one big problem. We've got a couple of little problems. Um, can we fix them? The answer is the best way to do that is to use our fixed cross-section editor. And this is really what the focus of this demonstration is. So I'm going to add a bunch of cross-sections, fixed cross-sections, along the alignment here. And uh, hmm, I think I'm supposed to, uh, if I'm going to follow along the the uh, example that we do online, I think I should change the start station just so that we're working with the same sections in the example. And the start station we're going to work with here is, um, there it is. This is really neither here nor there, but uh, just so I can compare with other parts of the same example, I'll change the start station for the alignment. 
Okay. Now I want to create fixed cross sections. And we need to know where to start and how often to create them. If we look in the plan window here, you can see all the um, surveyed cross sections. If I turn on the background, that is. So there's a surveyed section right there, and that's at station 745. There's another one there at 766. Oh, geez, they're not evenly spaced. 706, 726. I guess they are. They're spaced at uh, 20 meters, starting at 686. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put fixed cross sections on top of the surveyed cross sections so that they will be as accurate as possible. That's where the terrain is most accurate. In between those surveyed sections, it's interpolating. Great. So let's let's add sections. 686. The start is correct. I don't think I want to go all the way to the end. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's go to uh, 786. No, I want to go about 200 meters, so yeah. uh, we'll just do those ones, 786. Okay, and now I don't want to create cross sections everywhere. I only want to create cross sections on uh, 20 meter in increments. So I'm choosing, now I've already set this up, but you can always change it. You can change um, your auto interval points at any time. We've got some set at 20 meter intervals. Um, oh, and they're not going to start at the right point. Oh, well. I really should have set my start station to, uh, oh, let's see what this does. No, these are going to come out on, on even 20 meter intervals instead of 6 meter intervals. Yeah. Oh well, in any event, um, let's just create these. And we're starting from 686. I'll just go to the end of the road. Start of range is important here. What this is going to do is it's going to um, omit cross sections between the fixed cross sections. What does that mean? What it means is that um, now here's a fixed cross section at 720. Here's another one at 740. And cross sections that might exist between the two are going to be ignored. And it's only going to use these fixed cross sections to calculate volumes. OK, with a little fiddling, I could get it to start at 686 and, and go at 20 meter intervals along here. Um, I'm not going to do that right now um, for the sake of time. Um, so we've got these cross sections. They're fixed. The volumes haven't changed much. Notice that that big volume went away. Um, fixed cross sections automatically, uh, whoops, that one's a bit goofy it's right at the end there, automatically remove or extend. There's the one where the, the well, maybe it's not. Um, we could have skipped it, but I have a, a strong feeling that the, um, the ground line is always extended out so that you don't get the surfaces falling off the edge and creating huge fills or huge cuts. Now, um, that didn't fix all our problems, though. We still got these issues with a little bit of fill in the stripping and in the undercut. There's some fill in the undercut. Remember that problem there. Now, you can fix these manually. So that, that's kind of cool. I could just go in here and uh, now let's see, do we have two of those? Yeah, we do. Uh, this one, again, the undercut is above the stripping surface, and it shouldn't be. Um, undercut shouldn't have to fill. So I want to fix that. I can fix it manually, or I can fix it automatically. So let's look at the manual functions first of all. All of the layers in here are actually editable. You can go into the fixed section editor on the side here, and you can select 
each of the features. You can also select them right inside the section window by clicking with the selection cursor. And once you've selected a feature, which is one of your layers, let's say that one, you can edit it. Right click, edit polyline. Um, it's also on the, on the menu on the right hand side. And now I can pick up that point and move it around. Oops, that's not what I want to do. Escape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to create a new point here. Oops. And snap it onto the subgrade. I see the, the, the little snap cursor appearing there like so. Actually, that's not the subgrade. That's the stripping surface. And then I'm going to get rid of this point here. Hit the delete key. It's gone. Oops, there's two of them there delete. There. I fixed it manually. So you can do anything you want. Now obviously these are surveyed surfaces and you don't want to change the survey too much. Um, but there are things that make sense when you're looking at fixed cross sections. Tie off is another one. Okay, That ties off quite nicely. That's good. Oh, there we are. That was what I was looking for before. There's some um, stripping that's actually above the original ground. Now that I would have to say is a, uh, a survey error. And again, I could, I could select that feature in the, in the section window and move the points around in a sensible way so that I'm getting no stripping above subgrade. In fact, I could, or above original ground, I could actually just delete that section. I could break it here um, and then select this piece and delete it. Uh, remove. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a bunch of editing tools that allow you to um, to clean up your cross sections so that you can believe your volumes and you're happy with your volumes. If you're calculating pay volumes, obviously it's very important. Now, um, what if I wanted to do this automatically? There's tools for that. So let's take a look at this cross section and what can we do with layer operations. Now this is pretty sophisticated and you can do things here that um, I probably haven't even imagined yet because of all the, the tools. Um, let's create a maximum of two layers. No, minimum of two layers. Okay. It doesn't make sense for stripping to be above topo. So I'm going to take the minimum of stripping in topo and put it back in the uh, stripping WG layer. Okay, I'm going to do this on all cross sections. I'm going to strip this uh, overlap. Nope, use the intersection of the two layers. Um, that should do it. Actually, I also don't want any stripping outside of topo. So let's let's work within the topo region and also, yeah, there we go. So I've set up a little layer operation here that will find the minimum between um, stripping and topo, put it back in stripping. Now, you can see there's still a couple of fill sections here. Not big, but there are fill sections in the stripping um, layer. Say OK to this, overwrite the layer, recalculate. That should happen automatically, but there's a little glitch in the software there. Look at that, all zeros. Perfect. So now, no matter how hard I try, I will not find any stripping layer above topo. I can do the same thing with subgrade, so let's, let's just go through that. In the previous cross section, um, I don't think we've got any bad cross sections anymore. There's one. Okay, so what would be the solution here? Well, I'll do a layer operation. I'll take the minimum of undercut and is that undercut? Yeah. Hmm. Why is it called UG? 
Oh well. And stripping. Put it back in undercut. Oops, missed. I think everything else makes sense here. Shouldn't be outside of top of, although that's probably not an issue. Oh, um, no, I think I, I only want it inside undercut, and yeah, that's right. Good. Recalculate, and there you see it's fixed. And of course, I need to recalculate the data window volumes too. Now those tools can be, like I say, very powerful. Um, you need some imagination to think about what you can do with the layer properties dialog, whoops, with the layer operations dialog. Um, and you can, well, I'm going to show you, um, no, I think that's all I want to show you with layer operations. I think the next thing I want to show you is finding the difference between a design road and a uh, survey as built. Uh, so in other words, how, how well did the contractor do? Uh, any questions about A, creating fixed sections, uh, B, creating surveyed layers in your module setup, um, and then C, uh, the layer operation thing? OK, let's just carry on. Right, well now I'm going to open up an a, a, um, existing design, this one. And let's just maximize that so you can see it better. I'll use that, oh, does that screen layout maximize? I can't remember. Yeah, it does, good. Okay, so you can see that we've got a, um, an existing design here. It's got subcut. It's got multiple layers. Um, the subgrade is of interest. Now I'm going to add, just like I did before, the surveyed subgrade. Okay, so I will um, add a new terrain. Again, it's going to be one of my reference surfaces. And we'll put in the subgrade. Okay, and subgrade is layer 12. It's actually labeled here as SSG, subgrade, surveyed subgrade. Great, that should do it. Okay, okay, and there it is. Now, this is kind of a mix-up at this point. The, um, the interesting thing we want to see is the difference between the design subgrade and the surveyed subgrade, and we can see it. Um, but actually calculating the volumes is, is not trivial. For example, if I look at the um, surveyed subgrade cut, it's showing a whole bunch of cut in this area here that's real. Surveyed subgrade cut here means, you know what, the design road was higher than the surveyed subgrade. They didn't fill enough. Surveyed subcut here, subgrade cut here uh, simply means that we're cutting away the um, layers on top of the subgrade that were designed back down to the subgrade survey. Well, that doesn't really tell us anything because we want to compare it only with the design subgrade. So again, um, I could go into my template editor and maybe turn off everything in my template except subgrade. That can be tricky. Some templates don't allow you to do that very easily. But what I'll do is instead I'll use fixed cross sections. So I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm going to put in fixed cross sections every 20 meters for the whole road, start of range, yep, okay. And then I'm going to do some um, changes here. What I want to do is get rid of the layers that are not of interest to me so I can compare the uh, surveyed subgrade there, let's turn off that hatching, it's kind of confusing, with the real subgrade, the red one. Layer properties. You can um, turn off display for layers here, 
There's another thing you can do too, which works just as well, um, is you can, um, hmm, why am I not getting the plus sign here? What you can do is you can um, select layers and then delete them. So I could um, click on uh, subcut and then remove. OK to remove subcut layer. Remove in all fixed sections. So that would get rid of all of them. And now the subcut layer is not in there to screw me up. The other thing I can do is I can um, go into the layer properties and subcut's no longer in there. But the other ones like SRF2, SRF3, SRF4, I can uh, turn off display, turn off volume. OK. And now, OK, now why are they still being displayed? Not sure. OK, well, let's just do the other thing, get rid of them. SR3, delete, all layers, delete, all layers, and four, delete, all layers. OK. Now I got something simpler. And I can easily see um, when the um, surveyed subgrade is different from the design subgrade. And I can quantitatively figure out how much by looking at hatching and looking at volumes. So where it says here surveyed subgrade cut, that means I'm below. And where it says surveyed subgrade, um, I'm not sure we're looking at the right cross sections here. Yeah, 20 meter intervals, that's right. OK. Anyway, um, so you can see how much the um, cut means they didn't. They skipped 12 cubic meters in that section. Um, if it's fill, that means they added too much. And then you can also do things like measure slopes and so on. I mean, it, uh, these look like they're at the same sub, the same uh, super elevation, which is good. But there's a slight difference in elevation. I can see what the difference is here. My measure tool is telling me that's an offset of um, point, point 0.6 meters. Wow. I wonder if these are in feet. Anyway, um, oh, pardon me. That's offset from center line. Distance measured is 0. Um, yeah, OK, so it's less than a decimeter. I don't have that many decimals turned on in my display right now. I should, tu I should turn that up. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen that before, module setup in the units tab here you can change the um, number of digits after a decimal. So if I'm interested in measuring de uh, distances accurately, change that to 3. And now my measure tool is showing me um, an offset there of 0 0.03. OK, so it's, it's uh, just under 4 centimeters, not a big deal. And the slopes look good. Um, but you can measure slopes too. Um, oh, hey, here's a, oh, that one's still got the, uh, the layers turned on. Yeah, there we go. Here's one where the slopes are different. Um, the oh, we've gone beyond the end, I think. I'm definitely seeing some issues with my um, fixed section editor, and I'm going to look into that. I am using the beta software right now, so um, that might be an issue that um, is only in the beta. If it's in the current release, we'll fix it up. Um, This is the only one that seems to be working quite right. Oh, that one's working well, too. OK, good. So um, well, not quite. It's showing the wrong layers. But you can see the angle difference here, and I can measure that. I can say, OK, well, let's, let's look at, um, first of all, let's, let's look at the slope there of the design subgrade. And it says it's got a, a slope of, um, Oh, I turned it to DXDY. I don't want that. There we go. Better. So it's a distance. Uh, and you can see the slope up in the toolbar. 
4.3%. Now let's, let's get out of there and measure the actual built subgrade using the measure tool again. And in the toolbar, you can see that says 1.6% on the top right. Okay, so there's, there's a difference there of 3%. That's significant. The super elevation was designed at 4 plus something. Um, and yet the super elevation of this thing is, is just wrong. By the way, those slopes are also displayed in the fixed section editor when you select a polyline um, and you move along that polyline. So um, where's my next previous? There we are. Oh. Why is it not showing up in here? <laughs> Uh, there's my current point, and next, there we go, right, okay. So you can see that the, um, the slope coming down from that slope line there is 30%, um, and then the slope falling is zero, that's the bottom of the ditch, um, and that's the actual surveyed line. I believe I've got the uh, surveyed subgrade selected. Now if I select the, the actual design subgrade, I can do the same thing. And oh yeah, same angles, 33 and 0. That's good. Um, okay, so this is, there's a lot of power here. There's a lot of tools. There's my 4.9% uh, for super elevation, which is on the surveyed subgrade, pardon me, on the design subgrade. And now if I switch over to the um, surveyed subgrade, it's showing me oh, 4.9 there. That's good. But over here is 0 0.9. Yeah, I guess these, these slopes are good. Okay. That's all I wanted to show you. And it looks like i got some work to do figuring out why the uh, fixed cross-sections are not all correct. Um, any questions before I close off the session? Good. Well, thanks again for your time. We'll be back in two weeks' time, and uh, I, I should have looked up the uh, the next the next uh, webinar. But there will be a webinar in two weeks, and uh, I think Jack will be presenting. Thank you very much. Bye now.